what does it really take to influence the way that decisions are made in the day-to-day -day flow of work? To me, it's, it's transparency. And that's been one of the goals of data science for a long time. Generative AI is starting to help with that. But it's why am I making the recommendation that I'm making and trying to put some of that insight in front of the user. But that also then follows to how do I give them a mechanism to, again, deviate from what I've actually provided? And I got to be able to capture that. Being able to say, okay, I recommended 10, but the user wants to go to 15. And then triggering something in that process, again, in a way that's not going to in increase the cognitive load, right? It's something that's going to be easy to do to capture why they, they increased it by five. And that feedback back recursively into your team. Then you want to get in front of these end users on some cadence, maybe it's monthly, quarterly, et cetera. And you want to say, this is what you told me. I listened. One of the things I hit very early in my career in data science was, you know, we had a brand as a team of not listening. You know, you guys always walked in and you acted like you had the answer. This is a way to, to break that and say, no, this person is actually here to help me to focus on the things that really need my attention, to take things off of my plate that are more administrative or repeatable, and then to listen to me and to realize that they don't know everything and they want my help. So you also want to be careful with this, not to force too much change up front. So if you've re-engineered a process, you may be very tempted to say, okay, we had 500 processes across the world, right? Everyone had a local variation. We got it down to one and we're gonna deploy that. You should put your tombstone up now. That's not gonna go well for you, right? But teams are tempted to do that because again, they want results. They wanna be able to go to the executives and they wanna be able to say, we went from 500 to one. But you gotta be really careful with that because your users, you're gonna trample them in the process. Like I'd much rather, deploy 50% of the new process and keep 50% of the original, listen to the feedback, and then in, in the next iteration, go to 75%, then 90%, then 95%. And over the course of, you pick your time horizon, you're able to get them, maybe from 500, you actually went to three, because you realized there were three global variations due to custom laws or something that you couldn't overcome, or workers' councils or something else. So that is something else that you got to be careful for, all in building that trust as you create those co-authors and those co-participants, those co-sponsors, the co-exciters through this.